Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. We have the schedule of panels that we will see at CitizenCon this year, and they are looking very impressive. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much for the support. It is truly appreciated. And if you do enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. So recently, Cloud Imperium released the CitizenCon schedule for what we will be seeing this year. And so today I would like to run through each panel, shedding a little bit more light into what we will see and also what I think they may show as well. But before we get to that, in celebration of CitizenCon, Toby have teamed up with Cloud Imperium and VKB to not just offer you 15% off the Toby Eye Tracker 5, but also the chance to win some very exciting prizes, with prizes including many VKB NXT Evo sticks, the Toby Eye Tracker 5 with accessory bundle, and many RSI Zeus Mark II CLs and ESs. So some really incredible prizes there. I have placed a link in the description below where you need to go to enter the giveaways. Plus, I have provided my link below that will take you to that 15% off deal for the Toby Eye Tracker 5. I can highly recommend them as I use mine every single time I jump into the verse. And with these new persistent ship MFDs, being able to glance instantly at each MFD is such a benefit when flying around. Plus, Cloud Imperium and Toby work together to provide the best head tracking experience, like camera boost and a whole slew of other settings as well. On that note, if you do pick one up, feel free to jump onto my Twitch channel so that you can take a picture of my settings to help you start out. Also, using that link in the description provides my channel with a direct kickback, and thank you so much to those of you who have done so already. Okay, back to CitizenCon. Now, the first panel kicking off day one, that begins at 11am BST. Remember, we are still in British summertime during this event, so if you are converting the time to your own time zone, use BST, not GMT or UTC. But this first panel lasts around two hours, and it's going to be one that I think will probably blow most of us away. It is called Brave New World, and its description reads, Introducing Genesis the innovative suite of technologies and processes within the Star Engine that breathes new life into truly immersive worlds, achieving the fidelity and scale required to fill an entire universe. Now, a question often comes up, usually along the lines of, how do you expect Cloud Imperium to create 100 systems when it takes them 10 years to make one? Now, of course, since Star Citizen decided to take the procedural generation route and fully physicalize planets instead of just having four or five landing zones that you are taken down to on rails, the idea of a hundred systems at launch went out the window completely. But that set a brand new challenge, being how do we create systems quickly enough but ensure that the fidelity and the detail remain? And it sounds like Genesis is the answer. Now, as it mentions, this is a suite of technology, tools, and processes that allows Cloud Imperium to generate full planetary systems at speed, but also hook other tools and tech into it, like how they build and distribute points of interest, be that natural aspects like rivers, caves, and so on, or buildings, wrecks, settlements, and everything else. Doing it quickly, but retaining that same level of detail and quality that we have come to appreciate and they don't want to lose. Now, I also expect this panel will show off many other systems in the works beyond Pyro, like Nyx and Magda or Terra, or maybe even some Squadron 42 systems as well. But there is a panel coming later in the day that will delve into that stuff further, which I will get to in a minute. Now, it takes a lot to create a full system in its entirety, and I'm not just talking about the physical celestial bodies, but things we could see about are Planet Tech version 5, NPCs, missions, points of interest, weather, flora and fauna, and full ecosystems. Not to mention even planetary orbits or seasons, much of which is still required for Stanton, but having a system that each team can hook their individual work into and then overly simplified at the touch of a button, the procedural algorithms will generate a full system with all of this kind of already to go, is where Cloud Imperium want to get to. And it was at last year's CitizenCon that they spoke about using machine learning and AI to help in this area as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we hear more about that with this whole Genesis system. 
Now, for me, what's really exciting is not just how many other systems are in the works or how far away we are from seeing them in the verse, but more so how fast and to what depth can this Genesis tool create an entire system full with gameplay and content, and how are they going to expand on that in the future? Now, 100 systems built using the same process they used to build the Santon system is obviously not viable, and Cloud Imperium know this. So this year, kicking off CitizenCon day one, first panel at 11 o'clock in the morning, it is going to be one heck of a start. And personally, I would love to see more on, and hope to see more on Planet Tech version 5 with higher detailed biomes and different biomes like jungles and dense forests, as we've heard. Maybe even having Maelstrom connected to that with deformation of trees and so on, or how a ship could crash into the planet and then embed itself there and take on the environment over the years, which is something they are working towards, but also more performance and, as stated, things like weather and seasons. That would be phenomenal. Now, the next panel, starting at 1 p.m. BST, is called A Social Universe. And this one says, It's the people you meet and the bonds you form that truly bring the verse to life. Dive into how we're evolving social features to maximize your adventures from personal one-on-one -on -one interactions to massive gatherings with hundreds and even thousands of players. So if panel number one wasn't exciting enough, panel two will be showing us how the game will cater for every kind of interaction between players on all scales. Now, I really hope that this means org updates for player organizations, maybe some tools that we will have to use to handle the gatherings of that scale, like further VoIP controls and improvements, trading between one another, maybe offering and accepting missions, either directly or via beacons, and especially as crew members, having a captain's role on board your ship, giving permissions to other crewmates, and maybe allowing players to finally loan ships out to friends. Now, there are so many areas that this panel could cover, and I personally would like to see more on multi-crew, VoIP, like internal comms for ships, trading items between players, maybe even trading ships, offering more missions and mostly org updates as well. This panel will last for about an hour and 45 minutes, but like with all panels, do expect about a 10 to 20 minute transition time as they hand over to the other speakers. Now, there is so many important things that they could talk about on, on this panel, and all of it is extremely vital to make Star Citizen feel like a proper MMO, but knowing which they will and which they won't is just too hard to determine. Now, after the Social Universe panel between 2.45 and 3.30 p.m., it will be the cosplay competition, which is not for everybody. Not to take away from the excellent cosplay talent, as many of these costumes are just incredible, and if you are into that kind of thing, you definitely don't want to go anywhere. But for many, including myself, I'll probably use this time to grab a drink, have something to eat. We'll see. Now, the next panel at 3.30 is called Dress to Kill, and its description reads, From high fashion to dynamic function, discover starware. Yes, you heard that right and exciting new character-focused specializations that let you define your identity and take on the challenges ahead, including the return of a legendary friend from CitizenCon's past. So firstly, Starware. Now, this will likely be the name of their tech that will incorporate all of the other technologies that go into all things characters. Like we're seeing with Genesis and all the planet tech that gets sort of bumped into this one system, I believe Starware will be that kind of similar system that includes things like Starcloth for realistic fabric physics, all of the character customizations, which will likely expand even more with each patch from here on out, bringing more hair, tattoos, piercings, and maybe even body shape options as well. Although we know they won't be too varied, as they still need to remain within the game's metrics. But with this description stating character specializations, I feel this may also be pointing towards that passive stat progression. Like we heard at last year's CitizenCon, the idea being that if you are running all the time, for example, your character's endurance will naturally increase passively. So it's not a skill point that you assign to your endurance. It is more the natural flow of nerfs and buffs as you do or stop doing certain things. I also think this panel might heavily focus on all of the new and upcoming armor types as well, seeing armors and clothing that specialize in various gameplay elements, helping to aid or support those 
wearing them in that role. And the recent monthly reports have been speaking about these without really sharing much information on what they are or what the armors are going to be. So that will be a great panel to see just how impactful deciding on what outfit to take depending on the job at hand, but also just expanding on your character even more, making them far more individual than they are already, which will certainly help in the, the vast MMO of hiring the right people for the right job. Now, finally, when it states a legendary friend from CitizenCon's past, I actually have no idea who this is in relation to characters, clothing, armor, and so on. I've heard people talking about Tony Z. He has nothing to do with characters. Again, people saying Ben Lesnick, Jeremiah Lee. I don't think it's any of them, but I do not know who this could be relating to, and we will just have to wait and see. And then the second to last panel of the first day is called Beyond Pyro, and this description reads, To the fantastic reaches beyond Stanton and Pyro, join us as we explore the exciting new frontiers of Star Citizen's persistent universe. Now, as I say, I'm sure we will see some sneak peeks of other systems during the first panel. They will be certainly holding off revealing any progress made on systems beyond Stanton and Pyro, though, for this panel. We know they have been working on the Nyx system for some time now. Squadron 42 will have many systems where the campaign takes place in, like the Odin system. But could there be much more progress further afield? Like other systems attached to Stanton, being Terra or Magnus, or maybe Pyro that leads to Nyx and Castra and Cano, amongst others. This, I think, will be a fascinating panel that hopefully, alongside the Genesis system shown off in the first panel, could highlight many more systems that are in the works at various levels of completion, ready for Star Citizen 1.0 and beyond. This is why, when it comes to, you know, people asking me, do I think, how many systems do I think we'll see at 1.0 or at launch? We could see five, we could see three, we could see 20. It is just too hard to determine, as the process and speed of building a system from start to finish is ever evolving and ever increasing. And I'm hoping that they will have a lot to show off that will blow us away, especially if they have already been incorporating this Genesis system. Now that leaves one final panel to finish the day off with, but unfortunately it says redacted, so I have no idea what this panel's about. Nah, I'm only kidding. This is most certainly gonna be the Squadron 42 update panel. Pretty much 100% on this, and within this panel, I truly hope and expect to hear about a, an intended release date window for Squadron. But I am very happy that they have included this panel in day one, as this will be a great way of closing out the day. And it looks to be around two hours, which I'm sure will be full of information. Also, that kind of leaves about an hour and a half before the event officially closes. So we could see a playable demo presented in the same way as the Pyro Playground at last year's event. I personally feel that there won't be a playable demo of Squadron. That is more just a feeling than anything, but I could be wrong. But what a first day. Personally, I think the first panel with Genesis will steal the show for me on day one, as this will truly highlight just how much the PU can expand and how quickly it can expand, while also showing how detailed the planets and locations can be. Of course, they are all exciting panels in their own right, but we need to get on to day two, which is going to be the biggest day of all, I think, even though it is only a half day. Now, for day two, the schedule times have changed since they first revealed the, the schedule by moving it forwards one hour. So instead of the doors opening at nine, live stream at 10, and then the first panel at 11, like we saw on Saturday, it is now doors open at 8 a.m., live stream at nine, and first panel at 10 a.m. Again, all in BST, all British summertime. Now, the first panel of this day is already sending me into a hype frenzy. It is kicking off, as I say, at, at 10 a.m. BST and is called Crafting Your Home. And this panel states, explore the fundamentals of crafting and base building, including how they combine to enable new opportunities for players and ultimately create the future of life amongst the stars. So this is a panel dedicated to base building and crafting and how that'll tie in together and all things that surround that form of gameplay. Now, what I really hope to see from this panel and expect to see is a thorough run through of exactly what the process of building a home will be like. So once you have the resources, how will we then buy the land or find the land or see what is within an area of land that might determine whether we want to build an outpost or mine that area? 
what tools or vehicles will we do this with and what will we build with and exactly how the gameplay will go when it comes to building. For example, will there be much hands-on? Will it be using drones like we saw in the concept art from last year? How will defences work? How will we be setting up the resource network? Will we see the differences between high sec, low sec and null sec? How will the crafting mechanics work like decorating the interior of our buildings? But also building spaceships as well. And maybe even a little more information on whether we're going to be able to be able to build out in space. As they did say, they will explore the possibility of that. There is so much to learn from this panel. And like many of you, base building is of big importance. And I am certainly overly excited to finally see how much progress they have made on base building. Whether we have anything to play with is yet to be seen. I highly doubt it. But if they can get the process down on paper at least and explain it to us exactly how they see it working out, that'll give me a lot to go with. Now, following on from that base building panel, we have a panel titled Captains of Industry with a description reading, uncover the ships and ground vehicles that will serve as your primary tools for base building in the verse, revisit a classic and more. So this will be focused on base building specific vehicles, but also other vehicles that all tie into the overall process from resource gathering, refining, transportation, and of course the building. Now, my guess is we may see something like the Expanse or hear about potential refinery vehicles. There could be a medium salvager vehicle coming soon or announced, plus a deeper look at at least some, if not all of the vehicles that we will be gaining land and building with. From that small single person hover surveyor tool to the Atlas platform mobile base, all the way up to the Galaxy and the Pioneer. Now, in regards to the Galaxy, with the Polaris set to release at this year's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, which is in November, so next month, I would not be surprised if many of the ship teams have already moved on to the Galaxy and hopefully have that built up to some extent, as the whole reason they were rolling out the three large RSI ships in a row is because they can share many of the assets, speeding up that process. Will it be flight ready? Absolutely not. But it might be somewhere along the pipeline where they can show it off and even show off the base building module, maybe. And then for the Pioneer. Now, my first thought when they said revisit a classic was the Pioneer, but there is a good chance that this could be referring to something else. But the big question is what, of course. Now, revisiting a classic could mean an old industrial ship that is already in the game and in need of an update, or it could be on the backlog. It could be the redo of something like the Reclaimer or more likely the Staff Era, which is more my thought process, especially as we have seen the Staff Era in Squadron. Well, both the Staff Era and the Reclaimer in Squadron, so who knows? But one thing that I think we can all agree is great news is, as stated a while ago, attention is now shifting on to industrial gameplay and not just combat. So we will see the industrial side of Star Citizen evolve with gameplay in all areas and the ships and vehicles to complement that, especially as the economy evolves. So the need to gather, refine and transport natural resources for everything in the game will become vital. And this panel is that traditional Citizen Con ship panel, but will be focused on all things industry. And I cannot wait to see how all of these systems tie into one another to shape that backbone of Star Citizen being the economy and everything we can do with that. And then that leads us to the final panel of the day and the event overall called The Stars, My Destination, Star Citizen 1.0. Now, this panel starts at 12 p.m. BST and finishes around 2 p.m., I believe. So a good couple of hours there with the description reading PvP, PvE, non-combat. What type of game is Star Citizen? If you want answers, join us as we outline a high-level overview of Star Citizen 1.0 and what our intentions are for our epic shared universe. Now, a bit of a spoiler, Star Citizen is an everything game. It is PvP, PvE, PvPVE, and non-combat. So expect answers along those lines. But I suppose for those who might not know, Star Citizen 1.0 is essentially a released version or a release candidate of Star Citizen. Out of Alpha, a live soft release that contains all of the core tech and enough gameplay and content to warrant it ready for prime time. But they will still continue to work on it as long as people are playing it. In a nutshell, it is far more complicated than that. 
But this panel will tell us exactly what Chris Roberts and Cloud Imperium want Star Citizen's official main release to contain. So how many star systems? What features and mechanics will there be, like base building and crafting? And reinstating what Star Citizen is as Chris Roberts wanted it to be. So a very important panel that will answer a lot of questions people may have and outline what 1.0 will be and how Cloud Imperium planned to get there, but also what's to come after. Now, this panel will also likely give a soft date window for when it's intended to release or how long they envision it to be before they get there. And with the core tech rolling out now, hopefully the process of getting there will be easier to predict going forwards. But as always, if a date is given, it is still just a best guess. So take it with a pinch of salt. But CitizenCon on Sunday is going to be an incredible day for information about the future of Star Citizen. And there is not one panel that interests me more than the others. They are all equally exciting. And that whole day is just going to be... I'm just going to... I'm hoping I'm going to be like a sponge and just absorb it all. Now, once the doors close at CitizenCon, if you don't want the fun to stop, from 4pm through to midnight, Enter Atmosphere will continue on over at the Aviva Studios, which is a dedicated Star Citizen esports event with ship racing, dogfight competitions, more panels with Cloud Imperium guests and Chris Roberts and Sandy there as well. And in order to attend this, you need to purchase a separate ticket, which I will link below. And that would be one heck of a send off for CitizenCon. I just wish I could attend it, but I will be busy that evening. So unfortunately, I can't make it. But there you go. That is a rundown of all of the CitizenCon panels, highlighting what we will see and what I think we might be seeing as well. It is without a doubt going to be one of, if not the most exciting CitizenCon to date. And I cannot wait for it. Can't believe how close it is now. I will be arriving on the Friday with Rachel and Summer. And after getting them settled and having some food with them, I will then be heading to the venue for early check-in and getting that swag bag, taking that back to my hotel so that I'm not having to carry it around all day at the event. And then I'll be heading back out to the Bar Citizen on Wakefield Street to see all of you who are going. I look forward to meeting you all there. Be sure to come and say hello. But with that said, if you do enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Also, come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. You are all more than welcome over there. I will be live tomorrow or, well, actually today because I'm thinking of putting this out on Monday. So Monday and Wednesday this week, I will be live between 2 and 6 p.m. BST. The link is below. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It does the channel a big favor and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.